Good day, YouTubers. As you know, it's not just your boat that needs to be well maintained, but also your trailer. I've had this trailer for about 18 months now, and it's time to have a look at the brakes and just tighten up the cable a little bit. This trailer has mechanical brakes, and over time the cable will stretch. It does need to be tightened, but in doing so, I've noticed a couple of improvements that can be made, so I'm going to do all of that in this one video. It's not very hard to do, it's something anyone can do for themselves, so let's have a look at the job. My brake cable's a little bit loose, but when I looked at it, I noticed that these things are rusted as. So, I got the stainless steel ones, I'm going to replace these rusted ones and tighten the brake cables up at the same time. Of course, the job would be a lot easier to do when the boat is off the trailer, but whenever you're doing these sort of jobs, there's always a risk that with rusted stuff like this, it's going to be really hard to get off, and I might have to get a grinder with a cutting wheel to cut through it. So, best to do it at home, where I've got all the tools available, even though it is a lot more awkward. Now, this is the other bit that I'm going to replace, as you can see. It's getting very rusty, it's all seized up. So I'm going to replace that with a stainless steel one. Might be too hard, I've just got to take this bolt out. When I replace the other U-bolt, I'll bring the cable back and thread it through. And Bob's your uncle. And this is the stainless steel adjuster that I bought to replace it. While the stainless steel will resist rusting, stainless steel also has a tendency to bind up on itself on threads. So it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease along the thread. Not only will it prevent the stainless steel from binding up on the thread, but it will also inhibit the surface rust that even the best stainless steel is inclined to get around salt water. These are the stainless steel cable clamps that I bought to replace the ones that were rusting. I got them off eBay, they were quite reasonably priced, and being 316 stainless, they shouldn't rust very badly. I tried to get a video of the other side, doing the other side of this brake, but I had the camera on my helmet mount, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't worked, hasn't come out, and hasn't captured the scene in the frame for most of the job, so I've got the GoPro on a little tripod there. Hopefully we'll capture this one. There's not much to it, but I'll talk you through it as I go. As I say, it's pretty simple. Because I'm going to replace the front as well, which is right up there on the drawbar, and it's on a wheel, which I could probably uh, undo the pin through the wheel and do it all without pulling this out. As soon as I've got this end undone anyway, I'm just going to feed this back through. Ooh, which is easier said than done. But once I get a little bit started, it'll be easier. That's it. Now it's easy. Let's take note of where it goes, goes, un goes underneath this, goes through this. There's another U-bolt up the front that it goes through. Nothing magical about it, you just gotta pay attention to where it comes from, and make sure it goes back in the same spot. And just explain what I did here. I just snipped that nut up onto the back here. That one's not real tight, but I did tighten the lock nut down. I wound it through so there's only a little bit of thread sticking through because to tighten the brakes, you'll wind this back up this way. So I've got that much adjustment left in it to tighten them up as they wear down, which is plenty, but I tightened these two nuts together. They act as lock nuts, so the whole system won't come apart. And the other thing was when I got it, this bolt wasn't put in properly. And that was intentional because normally you could take this bolt out and put your cable through without having to unstring your cable from the trailer. But since I was unstringing mine anyway, I put this bolt in now. And I'll just mention that the other reason they didn't do it up is it's got a nylon nut on. Now, nylon nuts are sort of a lock nut. They won't come undone. But they're a single-use nut. You can get away with using them twice, usually. But I wouldn't attempt it on anything critical like a brake component. If you've got to, ever got to undo that nut, replace the nut with a brand new nylon nut. I'll pull this other one off and put this one on. Hopefully that's in view there. It's 
It's a strange way to put it together like that. Yep, that's why they've done it that way. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that means I've got to go and see if I can find a stainless steel bolt in the same way, or I've got to risk drilling this out so the walls are thinner. Can't say I'm terribly happy with either solution, but I will start off with the bolt. I'll see what I can do there. This is the stainless steel piece I've got to replace it and what I've had to do is put a 10mm bolt through there because the bolt that should go through it is about 12mm or so, half inch perhaps, and that's it there and I didn't want to risk drilling that out and weakening the sides of it. So I put this bolt through, same as I have with the old one. I've done the same sort of de deal with the old one. Put a bolt through it and use that bolt to hold onto that. So I'll do the same thing. And it's time to go ahead and replace this now. Uh, I'll just pull the, pull the cable out and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. I think it'd be the easiest way to do this. As soon as I don't have a hat camera with me. Alright, got this on now. The noteworthy thing about it is I've mounted it on so that the bolt, the head of the bolt is at the top. That way, if by any chance that nut falls off, there's still a reasonable possibility that the bolt's going to hold there and the whole thing won't fly off. I've tightened those two nuts together so they'll act like lock nuts. I don't expect it'll be a problem, but it never hurts to be safe. I got this back in the way it came out down through the outside hole and back up through the inside hole. I've made it tight enough so that there's enough give in it to take the brakes off so they're not rubbing. Doesn't appear like much but it's enough to lift the pads free of the disc. That's all you need. So now I've just got to get the uh, clamp on to clamp these cable. Bloody hell, I don't believe it. Every single time I've tried to do this on camera, something has gone wrong. I've had some sort of malfunction. <sighs> this time the camera cut out. Anyway, go through it again. Make sure you've got a little bit of movement in there, just enough to get the brake pads clear of the disc. And set this in and do your clamp up the same way as it was when it came off. There's a little bit of slack that's going to take up in there with use. It's a bit too stiff to pull it any tighter by hand, but one or two drives and this cable's going to come a bit loose again. So we've got the adjuster up the front. I'll tighten it up there after the first couple of trips. I'll check it each time. The important thing I wanted to say about doing these up is to do each side a little bit at a time, because as you pull one side down, it'll loosen the other side and you need to have tension on both these nuts so that they're not loose and they don't vibrate off. So a couple of turns on each side and when you're getting a bit tight, just one turn on each side. Keep them nipped up to about the same amount and you should be fine. There's cables going back through to the front turn buckle and yeah, there's a bit of movement in them, but I'll test it up the front on the handbrake just to make sure that it's going to take up all right. And then, as I said, I'll adjust it after the first couple of drives just to make sure that they stay good. Okay, just need to work the handbrake there. See how much movement we've got. We've got less movement than we have here in the um, arm that goes backwards to work it. So that will apply the brakes at the moment. We've just got to do a trip in it and see how much it stretches and probably adjust it a little bit on the return. The last thing to do is give that a good coat of oil and uh, job's done. Until I've done a trip in it and need to adjust it again. Well that's it, it's a simple piece of preventative maintenance that you can do yourselves. Keep an eye on your brake cables, keep an eye on your brake pads and keep an eye on your brake discs. The brake discs are in danger of rusting. 
drums are a little bit harder to keep an eye on. You have to take the wheels off to have a good look at them. But discs can be looked at any time. Just get your head in under the trailer. As I said, very easy to do this simple bit of maintenance and it does help keep you safe on the roads. If you'd like to see more of my videos, go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that like button, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.